I welcome everyone to join in for our first session of the day that is our keynote session and the topic for the keynote session is intangible asset tokenization and we have our first keynote speaker that is Mark Luangi. he's an IP counsel and also the managing director with IP stands and you can also have a view about IP stands in our virtual stage on the left and also get the chance to connect with them in sponsor intro session. So over to you, Mark. So thank you everyone for attending this uh, meeting this morning. I'm very happy to introduce this topic uh, to you, even though some of you might already know about it. My name is Mark Luangi, the founder of IP Stance, a IP firm based in Geneva, Switzerland, with representations in uh, Republic Democratic of Congo. So we are discussing what is an intangible asset and how do we tokenize it basically an asset is in financial accounting an economic resource it's anything tangible or an intangible that can be owned and controlled to produce value and that is held by a company to produce positive economic return Assets represents value of ownership that can be converted into cash. And as Mr. Joseph Sticklid said, no one would look at a firm's revenues to assess how well it was doing, since it's far more relevant to its balance sheet to look at the assets and liabilities. And that is also true for... In fact, tangible and intangible assets can be divided in two main categories. Regarding tangible assets, there are what we call current assets, which is cash and its equivalent, inventory and prepaid expenses. When it comes to fixed assets, we are looking at land, buildings, machinery and furniture, tools and equipment. On the other hand, when it comes to intangible assets, this is where we're looking at IP in terms of goodwill, copyrights, trademarks, patents, and computer programs. However, financial assets are also included, such as accounts receivable, bonds, and stocks. So, having said all this, we are wondering now, what is tokenization? Well, there is a simple formula. Tokenization equals digitalization plus financial components. Now, those financial components can be made of these four elements. Automated smart contract for, real for the deal execution. Comments for automatic transaction. Formally for calculating the asset price. And automatic validation of the initial data. In fact, tokenized assets may flourish as a complement to current traditional assets in the financial world, allowing smaller companies access to capital market financing. And this is the main point, because through tokenization, we can now advise our clients on how to do IP financing. Because since then, IP financing encountered many blocks, many roadblocks, depending on the jurisdiction where the corporation was operating. In terms, the, there are three main issues related to IP financing. First, in terms of legislation, there, there are many legal uncertainties in relation to IP financing. All jurisdictions don't treat the subject in the same way, causing discrepancies and uncertainties in business. Also, in terms of management, IP assets are often underexploited resources by companies. Why? Because most of the time, companies don't really uh, take the, um, the, the importance of intangible assets in their business growth. And the third point is in terms of finance. Many SMEs fail due to a lack of funding. This is where we can see how IP financing can actually solve those main issues. 
And how do we tokenize those assets? Those assets, in general, have to be backed. We call them asset-backed tokens. They either become security tokens or utility tokens. But in both cases, there are three main elements that need to be present. The first being, there needs to be an assignment of property right represented by the asset. The transaction has to be represented in a legally binding and recorded document. And all this has to happen via a digital representation of the real world asset. In fact, the requirements under supervisory law may differ depending on which assets, whether currencies, commodities, real estate or securities, the token is backed, backed by, and the legal rights of its holders. So that leads us to another type of uh, digital assets, which is now the fungible and the non-fungible tokens. So the question is, what is a non-fungible token, or otherwise referred to as NFT? NFTs are cryptographic assets on blockchain with a unique identification codes and metadata that distinguish them from each other. Unlike cryptocurrencies, they cannot be traded or exchanged at equivalency. And this differs from fungible tokens in the sense that fungible tokens are identical to each other and therefore can be used as a medium for commercial transactions. NFTs are the main um, vehicle to, um, to trade digital assets now when it comes to creative works such as paintings, photographs, um, uh, graphic designs, and so on, and music. Artistic work in general can very easily be commoditized and traded via NFTs. So what are the main benefits of asset tokenizations? Well, first, the liquidity of, the, of assets, in addition to a liquidity premium. It also offers the, the benefit of allowing fractional ownership as an economic model. There is a diversification of risk for the investor, a reduction of ge geographical barriers for investors, a reduction of entry barriers for trading and investing. It's a new model for raising capital for project development. And it's utilizing network effect for certain products to increase their popularity in the market. And above all, it reduces the administrative expenses. Having said that, considering tokenization as a new way of how assets are represented, transferred, and stored, it is inevitable for corporates to thoroughly assess how this may transform their business. So what are the opportunities and challenges now? From a higher cost efficiency, to leaner trade financing options, there are different opportunities arising from the tokenization of assets. At the same time, those challenges have to be kept in mind to preserve the business sustainability. So the problems and challenges that one will encounter are mainly related to dealing with a trusted issuer. The asset-backed token need to be based on certainty that at some point in the future, the participant can redeem his real-world asset. Secondly, there is a regulatory vacuum. Not all jurisdictions regulate this space in a similar way. There are more developments underway, especially currently, since many jurisdictions are recognizing the digital currency Bitcoin as a legal tender. Also, there are legal and possibility of rights uncertainties in the sense that we're not sure whether the token ownership confers ownership of the corresponding asset. 
which is key in the actual developments that are taking place. And also, in terms of anti-money laundering issues, know your customer regulations, the token issuer must comply with stringent financial regulators' requirements in order not to fall outside the scope of his um, responsibilities. So in fact, the idea of tokenizing assets may generally be perceived as straightforward, but its complexity arises due to the different perspectives to be considered, whether related to tax and accounting, uh, legal perspective, business and technology. Therefore, it is essential to collaborate with the right partner to lead the project to success. So to conclude, I would like to point out that given all the reforms and updates in Swiss law, coupled with the inception of its crypto valley, Switzerland is now ideally positioned to support corporations tempted to embrace these disruptive developments. And um, IPSTANCE is well positioned to assist you and support you in your tokenization journey. And um, I will stop there and uh, take questions for anyone. Thank you so much, Mark, for the wonderful presentation for the keynote. Uh, so I would request everyone that do we have any questions for Mark? And he has joined from IP Stands. He's an IP director and you're covering up a very different topic in our conference that is related to intangible asset tokenization so anybody from the participants would like to ask the question they can either write on the chat box on the right or they can join face to face and ask directly with mark and i've also created uh, the voting in the poll section so kindly do the polling before you leave the session so do the polling for Mark so that we can share the feedback with him directly about the experience with the session and what are the thoughts about. Thank you so All much. All right. Thank you. It was a pleasure.